Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a uh, another panel this today. We have one of our one of our few remaining ones, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be the moderator, and I've got guests Mark Ogali and Jason Krager with me today. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you both doing today? I'm great. How are you? Can I doing complain? well? Fantastic, because we're going to talk comics. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, Marco, we got I got to meet you at the last. Uh, Comic Art Live event, but uh, Jason, this is the first time uh, getting to meet you. Where, where are you based out of? I'm based out of Cypress, California. So oh, Southern right. California. Yeah. When you had mentioned nice you were at Southern the California. an Ontario Con, I was thinking, well, maybe you're, uh, you know, in the Great Northwest somewhere. Yes, uh, we do have an Ontario, California. So. Oh well, there you go. Uh, See, <laughs> I should have asked more questions before this panel started. Yeah. That's okay. It's okay. I wish it was in Canada. That would have been fun. <laughs> hey, uh, I don't know if it's your your mic is a little low, Jason. I don't know if it if it sounds that way to you, Marco, as well. But uh, it might be uh, if there's a volume on the mic control or something. But um, but I can I can hear you just fine. It's just a little lower than uh, Marco's. Is that, is that better? That's a little better. No. It All is. right. Well, so okay, perfect. So you got out to a show the other day. I got out to my first in-person con on Friday as well. So, uh, Jason, what was that like? I mean, I you know, I, I think it's cool that we're that uh, in-person cons are getting started again. But um, you, you know, for me, the that that first show for was uh, on Friday at MegaCon, and it was a really really large show and very well attended. So, what was what was the show in in Ontario like? It was really really fun. So I was surprised it was it was busier than the last con I went to three years ago. So that's the only gauge I have. Uh, but it was cool. There were a lot of fans. There was a lot of good people there. Um, regular people coming in and out. I don't think it was packed, packed, like shoulder to shoulder like San Diego gets. Mm -hmm. But at one point during the day, it was fairly busy. So it was cool. It was very nice and everybody was excited. So it's it's been a long time. People are happy to be back out. They certainly are. I mean, I, I was too. I mean, I've, I've been doing these live streams for two years now, but it, nothing beats being in front of, uh, you know, your fellow collectors and artists and getting to hang out in person. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to visit a few more shows as well. I mean, it, in the in-person cons can never uh, can never go away. I mean, that's 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 where all the fun and uh, you know engaging activity happens. These 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 sorts of things are good, but uh, in-person stuff is always going to be better. Have you gotten out to any shows recently, Marco? No, I plan on it though. I got the bug again. <laughs> it's been the last show I went to. I think was WonderCon when I had a table, and I. Gosh, I can't even remember. Jay, do you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was probably six years ago, maybe. Something like that. It was the first year they had I think it's more. Anaheim. Maybe eight. No, seven. Think probably, seven. It's probably like ten or something. But, but it's been a long time, Bill. But, yeah, I like to go in. Like he was telling me about the show and. Like you said, the camaraderie, like talking to other artists and stuff, because we're holed up in our studios most of the time working away. So right. being there live, it's awesome. Well, I think you're, you're due for another show, Marco, if it's been about eight or nine years since the last one. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to start again. <laughs> Good. Well, so uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna run the gamut of things to talk about. I mean, you guys talked about if I if I like black and white '80s and '90s you know books and that sort of time period, uh, you know, where I, then there's something good to talk about there. So, what what with that kind of a format of book is uh, is a reason for you to really be feel engaged by seeing things that aren't colored? What you know, I I always like getting that. You know, I was a big collector of the Marvel magazines back in the day when they were all in black and white and ink wash and. I really enjoyed seeing the stories in in that way. I mean, I, I, when I think fondly of, some, of a lot of the stories that I read as a kid, those Marvel magazines for me were always some of the most fun things that I got to read, the Incredible Hulk or those uh, Marvel preview um, or premier magazines that they had. So, and uh, the Warren horror books and, and those sorts of things. Loved all that. Right. 
Uh, I I didn't get into comic books until I was in high school, so that would have been like eighty uh, eight. So nineteen eighty eight, and the first comic book I owned was Grips by Tim and Chris Silver, and it was a black and white book, and it was the precursor to kind of like what would become Faust. Um, mm -hmm. And then I kind of had to work my way backwards after that. I could buy stuff at like the 7-Eleven that was like the old Conan's. Uh, the, one of the coolest sure things that I bought. Yeah, that stuff was good. One of the coolest stuff that came out back then is they did a Freddy Krueger magazine. That was in black and white also. And it was oh, a very that. short, like it, it maybe two uh issues came out or something and i remember buying it at the 7-eleven i was always into freddy it had a comic a freddy comic but i remember the drawing on the very last page and it was sam keith draw actually drawn freddy krueger and it was probably one of the coolest drawings and inkings of freddy krueger i'd ever seen uh it was just cool and then you know, Frazetta was an anchor. You discover Frazetta, not only was he a painter, but he used to ink that stuff. And it was amazing. And I like some of the older, more brush inking that came out of the 70s. Uh, that kind of worked its way into the 80s before the whole nib and, and artwork that became so tight and, and renderings and scissor hatches and all that stuff. And I kind of felt like there was more detail in the black and white comics. Uh, that's, that's what I was going to say too, Jay. Um, but go ahead. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I really feel like there was more detail. Like, uh, a one would eventually release brick top by Glenn Fabry and Grant Morrison. And, uh, Bricktop man was so well drawn and inked and it was just like a little eight page story in a couple of the a one issues that came out in the eighties. Uh, or one of the coolest things, Gary Leach, didn't he do the, do the, uh, the warp Smith. He did a warp Smith to or uh, story that was in, a1 also but it was part of the miracle man part of things but it's a black and white story and i believe it was gary leach and it was just so good like warp smiths the ones from miracle man do you remember those i know the artwork but i i never read it when it was on the uh, shelves or in the back issues but i've seen plenty of uh of uh, gary leach's work from that uh, time period and those books right. on, on uh, comic art fans. That's I love great this stuff. stuff too. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. A1 stuff was great. I loved um, the Howard the Duck magazines in the late 70s that Michael Golden did because like, they oh, did yeah. airbrush. And like, going, going back to what Jay was saying, like Savage Sword of Conan, like, um, especially like when Alfredo Alcala would ink yeah. somebody, like he put so much into it. It was texture and mood and just beautiful, beautiful artwork. And I, I didn't think you needed color at all for it. It was, mm -hmm. it was just so striking. Right. And the same with um, the Dark Horse stuff, you know, um, the aliens that Mark Nelson. Oh, yeah, had. Mark Nelson. Stuff yeah. Was cool. Great. Um, another dark horse thing that I loved was Head and McFeeney, uh, McSweeney's um, Roach Mill. I love. I just love oh, the yeah. textures those guys put in that too. Um, I love oh, a lot of Cerebus stuff. Yeah, yeah. Cerebus, yeah, that's Cerebus, true. Man. Yeah. Oh, Dude, the backgrounds. <laughs> oh yeah, Gerard's backgrounds, man. Yeah. Those things. Were right. Yeah, yeah. Insane. Yeah, we uh we had Mark Nelson on earlier today, a couple panels ago. He was uh, oh, I didn't wow. get I didn't get to do that interview though, but it was fun uh, listening to it. I didn't get to hear the whole thing, but um, he's very entertaining. 
and you know he, he has an education background he's taught a lot of artists so he's he's uh he's a pretty amazing guy and i i've always really admired his work nice yeah he's he's amazing i and in fact uh some of his work and stuff has influenced my stuff so that's kind of why in at the end of the day when i develop an intellectual property to to do my own comic it it kind of like is based on the art so i i kind of take art and then wrap the story around it and i'll determine the style in which that that book is going to be made in uh to kind of enhance that so uh my book hammer that marco co-writes and i created and wrote and drew um is just that it's my it's my kind of like my love letter to black and white comics mm -hmm. and uh at some point hopefully during this we can get a chance to show some of it yeah no that would be great i know we didn't talk too much ahead of the uh this conversation but i'm happy to show any artwork that i can so how long have you guys uh, known each other and been working together or when or how long have you known each other and then when did you start working together when you decided that collaboration was a good thing oh 20 plus years now it's been a long time um uh, i want to there's probably 95 when i started because i got to know jason through joe williams uh assisting for him um so it's probably 95. i think i we inked the i inked the piece really quick that year too didn't i the kill uh killian splash yeah. page yeah yeah Correct, correct. It was a uh, like a page turned sideways that I had drawn of this character and these dragons and these people fighting. And Marco decided to ink it. I believe I still have it. I wish I would have dug it out. It's sitting in one of my portfolios over here. Oh, it's so, probably horrible. Yeah, we, <laughs> we've we've worked together on and off for a very very long time, and. Uh, you know whether he was inking me or whether like when when he took on the the task of doing hammer with me uh i knew i was going to be penciling and inking everything so that left very little for marco to do but marco has like a literary background also so i i decided to kind of tap into that so he's a very good editor uh he's a very good writer and uh we uh got him also lettering the book so we we decided to uh contact an old friend of ours who's like a legend in comic book lettering and he allowed us to use some letters and stuff that haven't basically been used for like 20 years so uh special shout stuff out to robin designed. spihar yeah shout out to robin spihar and uh dreamer designs and uh so he he allowed us to use a bunch of stuff he he sent everything to marco and then marco set upon the task of actually lettering and he did really really well uh spihar tatiana says spihar question mark robin spihar uh one of the greatest like letterers from the Hi, late 90s early 80s uh what was his other partner's name JD, JD Bruce, or yeah, JD Bruce. Yeah. Yes. So they together created Dreamer Designs, and they were one of the pioneers of digital lettering, right as digital lettering was happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that everything is digitally lettered, um, essentially that's how we did it so marco took upon the task of lettering hammer and co-writing it with me and kind of overall editor of the project to kind of keep me in line because <laughs> as did an artist really I, I get out of hand uh, i think so i think we should i think we should show some of that if you're interested in seeing yeah. it so here let me uh share like let me yeah. get into this. Share screen. Is that, oh, I see Herman and hi Herman. Hi, hi panel. How's everybody? Hi Let's Herman. See. One second. 
And then I sure? did not mm -hmm. know. That somebody said in the in the chat that Chuck Austin was actually Chuck Beacom or in doing the uh, Miracle Man stuff. That's great. I didn't know that. That is. So can you see that? Yeah, that's kind of in a floating down. screen, uh, Jason. If you if you shape if you uh, shrink the screen left to right a little bit, it'll actually make the image be a little bit taller. It'll scale it pr proportionate to that space that's in there. Oh, sorry. Hold on one second. That's right. What did I do? <laughs> that's trippy. <Yeah. laughs> I know the Come share on. screen feature on here could could use a little fine tuning, but oh, because it's Come sharing on. the whole desktop. Okay. Yeah, well, that's probably the, if that's that might be the best we can get. I can get closer. Like we can r really get in here and scroll through all this yeah. stuff. Like we can do that if you'd like. So this is actually Hammer. It's still available on Indiegogo. It's Hammer a post Ragnarok tale, and it's what if the Ragnarok has happened, and the artifacts of Asgard start raining down on Midgard. And eventually, at some point, the gods that have survived Ragnarok will come to re reclaim their artifacts. This currently is Star. She's a scrapper from the Wasteland. And she is now the champion currently that carries the hammer mule near so it begins easily enough you can see the books all black and white uh, i doubled down on black and white and zip a tone uh, i gave you a glossary to kind of help with some of the words that we use because ganunga gap is a pretty hard word and it i want i wouldn't even want to try it. to pronounce that right ganunga gap <laughs> Yeah, Good and we give you yeah. the phonetic spellings. And we also use the uh, Old Norse uh, uh, versions of the words also. So Midgard is Midgarder, Mjolnir is still Mjolnir. Uh, Jormungandr is Jormungandr. Uh, Asgard is Asgarder. Um, these are just the correct Old Nor Norse pronunciation. So... Our book actually begins at the beginning of Ragnarok as Thor shows up to Midgarder to come across Jormungandr, the Midgard serpent. And the Midgard oh, really nice. serpent wraps itself around the great uh, world tree, the Yargus drill, uh, and has begun to shake it. So currently, Thor doesn't kind of like that, so he decides to battle it out with Jormungandr, and he segments Jormungandr uh, while he's fighting him, inevitably meeting his demise, both of them simultaneously. And uh, I spent about three months drawing this book, and doing all the sound effects and everything else that's all part of the art. Um, we used very special fonts and created fonts for the God speak, which is coming up here. This is as, as the hammer is called back to Odin. And uh, Odin catches the hammer and tells everyone to prepare for Ragnarok. Um, I really do love black and white comics. Like they, they have so much detail and grittiness and, and I wanted this to be a very, very gritty, very, let's see if we can get closer on this. Oh, I think it's going to pixelate out and stay that way. Well, they're pretty good. Uh, so what's, uh, what is your, your medium 
of choice here is uh, is, is this all ink wash or uh, you know what what's your what's your pr approach to creating the art when you mentioned the zipatone and whatnot? So currently, uh, Hammer exists digitally. Digitally, I, all right. Yeah, I drew it digitally in Photoshop using oh, okay. brushes. Uh, some of it exists as physical pencils. Mm -hmm. And I, so I can scan it in the computer and then ink it digitally. Right. And, um, yeah. It's, uh, and then all the Zipatone is also added digitally. So I have oversized printed pages of this work. And they look actually really cool at 11 by 17. I'm really surprised how kind of nice everything came out and what kind of contrast you can get in black and white comics. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's the other thing. Like there's such a rich, like depth of, of field of view in this work. And I, I kind of want, I want that. Uh, it makes for good storytelling. And uh, I think to color this would almost ruin it. So no, I agree. I, I, agree. I, re I love it. Like I this. really, I really did double down on making it the best black and white book I could. It runs over ten issues. This is just the first issue. Um, I, as I said, I did an Indigo go campaign it's still in demand and it can still be picked up it's currently at the printers and i over ordered so they'll be echoed. and i really hope they enjoy it it's currently if you go and you purchase it you can download the pdf and actually read the book this is our bad guy his name is loki so this is my version of loki let's see if we he's a little get... bit more intimidating than uh, marvel's version he definitely <laughs> is uh i wanted him to have still be intimidating and still have all the qualities of loki like he's a trickster god so he uses technology on earth to to do more trickstery things he has these floating orbs that he uses to kind of vaporize people's faces. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty silly. Uh, I think it's there's one. Until right it happens here. to you, it's <laughs> yeah, it's not silly at all. Yeah. Let's see if I can get to the vaporization. There it is, right there. there it is. <laughs> Zap. <laughs> So yeah, I really enjoyed doing this book. It's uh, my love letter to black and white comics. And I, I think that if you love black and white comics as much as I do, uh, people should go out and pick it up. It's a it's a win-win. It's a 52-page first issue. <laughs> That's a I pretty can. sizable book. So, what would a, a book like this? What kind of challenges did it present you? You know, you're doing this all by yourselves. Um, you know, what was the uh, the biggest risks you think you were taking when you were putting this together? Um, so before I had done this, I had done a another campaign with another company, and it was okay. kind of like I I had. I had funded this and then they came to me and were like, Hey, can you do this? We're in the middle of funding. We need to, we need to do this. So I, I ended up kind of jumping on board with them too and kind of watching what happened as I'm drawing for them also. And I noticed that after I had done all their pages for them, that, that I got, better as an artist so the challenge was to go back and actually like redraw the entirety of the first issue of hammer because i wasn't happy so that was the first challenge uh now the second challenge has been a printing issue so i've been to three different printers 
and I, it kept coming back print wise, uh, with weird errors and we couldn't figure it out until about last week. And, uh, we got the printer to come back to us and they had figured out the problem. So, so far the, there's been no problem with the arch or the creation of the world, or, uh, I have a pretty firm idea of like the characters that inhabit this world. I like to create interesting characters and I, they really have a wasteland type thing going on with them. And I enjoy the world that they occupy. Um, I think the biggest challenge was printing. Like you can see how much I've color held or held the black and white mm -hmm. back and muted it to gray and finding a printer that can print like in those muted tones and give me all that stuff, the way it's, I see it and the way it's on the page has been the biggest challenge so far. So this, so the book's larger than I did 32 pages uh, of my story. And then there's a lot of supplemental stuff that happens. That's also part of that. Uh, part of those stories. It's, it's continuation of stuff. And I really like, Jason Gonzalez's work. He does uh, La Mano del Destino. And he has a very Kirby-esque style to him. So I had him do a 70s version of my character after she's attained godhood and kind of does her own thing. So there's a six-page story also that Jason Gonzalez did and hand-lettered uh did he, did also, he write that story or did, did, did you write it and, and then he did the art or no i let him i just gave him an idea and he just ran with it so this is gonzo doing some cool stuff he designed the uh the i guess would be the god look of her after she's achieved achieved her godhood so he designed the whole uh, costume and how she would look in the end. And uh, I think he nailed it. He did really good. I really like his work. Um, I'm actually looking forward to what he does next. And then Dan Fraga did a piece for me. Yeah, I like Dan's work a lot. And uh, a few other artists. So... It's Erwin Papa. And uh, I think that rounds it out. That's that's the entirety of the book. I just showed you guys everything. Well, I did so link in the uh, comments the uh, the Indiegogo link as well for those who wanted to check it out there. You know, one of the that things when great. I talk with uh, creators about, uh, you know, fundraiser campaigns like these, I think one of the one of the neat things is, is the opportunities it gives you to to work with other artists. Because you know, typically, whether whether they might be doing a different uh, like alt, alt version of a cover or doing a, a, a smaller interior story like like you had done there, I think that uh, you know that's that's got to be part of the fun of doing a project like that is bringing in other creators whose work you really admire and then seeing what they do with your with your characters and you know, but that's a common theme in most you know whether it's Indiegogo or you see it on Kickstarter or or anywhere. I think that that's uh, that's something that I think. The, you know, as a creator, you probably look at it and say, you know, you, you can't do it all yourself. And if you can work with other people who have similar uh, tastes or you think would be perfect for your project, I mean, it's got to be a, a really rewarding thing to bring in other creators and, and work with them as well on a project like that. Anzo was a no brainer. Jason Gonzalez, I've known him longer than I've known Marco. Uh, I've known him since the eighth grade. So it was. It was, we've always wanted to do something together. And when, when I finally did hammer, he was ready to go. So, uh, it had been a, a, an accumulation of things until we actually got to the point where we could do something together. But with the success of his book, Lomano del Destino, 
I just made it all happen. So that was my wife. Say hi. <laughs> hi, Shannon. <laughs> She's so, sitting out. Oh. Yeah, yeah, she's getting ready. They're heading to a party, a uh, birthday party for, no, not a birthday party. It's a uh, color guard, like, final party. So when I'm done here, I have to get ready and meet them over there. Well, we've got a, you'll be a half hour late. That's all right. So uh, yeah, okay. so what, are, what, are, what other independent, I, you know, I remember looking through the, uh, through some of the research. What, what, tell me about uh, Kill Journal as well. What was kill journal so the thing that kind of made me redo hammer so this is the kill journal mm -hmm. uh it's 120 pages of so it's the survivors of um, imagine imagine it's a horror movie like jason and freddy or or any like weird uh revenant-esque psychopath and, and all these survivors get together and go and attack the bad guy like so it's a bunch of post-traumatically stressed like people whose families have been killed by jason's or freddy's or michael myers and we made our own like archetype mm -hmm. and uh all these people band together under the the uh banner of this priest who wants to make them destroying angels and they head out to uh get these revenants and send them back to where they need to go and uh i spent seven months drawing and inking it it's uh, available through giftedrebels.com uh there's a hardcover leather bound edition for forty dollars and there's a twenty five dollar soft cover version also um it's actually one of my favorite books like it it's really well written and i really like the story and people really like want a second one i'm surprised at how many people are actually reaching out to adam lawson and uh are asking about a second book and are ready for that so adam's super busy with exiled with wesley snipes currently but mm -hmm. i'm sure we'll get back to the kill journal at some point so it's it's an amazing fun book i uh maybe i should let marco tell you a little about it too he read it like marco talks marco knows words I can talk. he can share <laughs> yeah <laughs> what'd you what'd you think of the kill journal bud i like it the one thing I wanted to say about it was that was Jason's proving ground. Like uh, he had to pump out a lot of stuff in a short amount of time, plus do other things too. So that's where he like got his chops. It's good. He's a lot better now though. I like um, going through it. I mean, going through that process, mm -hmm. you put the work in, you get better like anything. Right. Right, right. I agree. So I, I can see the changes and stuff, and I, I don't embrace like one single style. Like I just kind of whatever happens, kind of happens. And if I could find ways of going faster and still achieving the same goal that I did, and spend three hours on something compared to like forty hours on something, mm -hmm. then. And they're the same thing, just one's really super tight and the other one's just a figurative, grounded, solid drawing. I'll always go to the three-hour one more than the 40-hour one. Uh, I think times have changed since the night. It doesn't have to be perfect like all the time anymore it it just has to be good and i i like that ever since i've done this book i keep evolving and i'm gonna keep evolving and i'm looking forward to it it's it's fun 
it's fun. I, as I said, that Ontario show was fun. I, I kind of wish I had taken more art or had more time to do more art when I was there. Well, there's never enough time to make art. So, so Marco, when you were working on Hammer, you know, uh, you know, you were doing lettering and some writing and, and what, you know, what was that like kind of coming in as a, as someone as a, it's not like you're a backup. I'm sure you were contributing in, in many different ways to that book. So, uh, so, so what were your roles and how did you, yeah, how, how did you feel that way? Just, um, first of all, that was my first book that I lettered. So up to it, I was, I was panicking a little bit, but then I was like, you know, I've read plenty of books. I talked to Robin. I should be okay. And, and like I said, Robin Spear is a really great letterer. Like, so I had my, I had my safety net. I was okay. So I just went for it. Um, Jay included the, the sound effects into the art. So that was something that I didn't have to do. But um, yeah, the, the other things I did to help Jay was um, uh, doing the typesetting, uh, like all, all the, all the words, all the typesetting in the book, I laid that out for him. The glossary, um, mm -hmm. the introduction, because I have a little bit of background in design. Jack of all trades, master of none, right, Jay? <laughs> right. So, exactly. And then, um, exactly. And then uh, I just so basically with Jay's words, I just I just inked them. Basically, I took what he had. I I tried to find the voices of each character. You know, and and he spoke about him so much that I got, you know, I I, I kind of know him, you know, pretty well too. So it it kind of came easy with the with the you know the pictures he gave me and and the um, I should say the art he gave me and the and just his text of uh, you know what they were saying. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I thought we did pretty good, huh, Jay? It was uh, I th we did we didn't bite too we much, huh? No, I don't think there was a lot of butting heads. A lot of it was, um, like, Marco allows Marco allows me to like make a fool of myself. So that's that's one. Okay, so and that's that's good. So when I give him something, like, he realizes that I'm I'm not a writer. I have. Okay. He broke so up a little Tatiana bit. Tatiana asked, can you that? tell us what's your collaboration pro? Sorry, you, yeah, you broke uh, up. Tatiana asks. Oh. Jay, Jay, Jay. Okay, are we back? Repeat what you just said. Yeah, repeat what you just said oh, like 10 seconds ago because you broke up. Oh. Uh, um. It was about Marco giving you a little extra room to kind of hang yourself, and then uh, then we didn't hear the rest of it. The collaborative uh, 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 okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> yep. That's the that's a connection going bad for a moment here. Oh, now you're back. It's so weird. My, we're back. Okay. Yes, we're back. Uh, yeah, Marco gave me room to make fool of myself. So I, when I would write, sometimes I write, I may not write the right words, but I, I will lean into the feeling that I'm trying to get at. Mm -hmm. And Marco's job is to take that really broken uh, idea that I sent him and to turn it into words that have meaning and then he'll run them back to me and i f and then filter it through me so that we can find the shortest usual way of saying something or the most concise way of doing it but marco for the most part uh gets to that point without me um can you tell us what your collaboration process looks like since you're friends and live close? Do you have a lot of back and forth? Do you work in person at all? Yes, we do work in person. I can come to Marco or Marco can come to me. Uh, there is a bit of back and forth. Uh, inevitably, I can try to talk give Mar every day. Yeah, Sorry, at least Jay. once or twice a day. No, it's okay. I, I talk too much. 
Um, the pr the physical process of I can give you the literal process. So I'll take a page, I'll draw it, and then I will draw my own little word balloons and hand write what I want in those word balloons or or in the narration. I'll literally just hand write it for Marco uh, mm -hmm. digitally and leave it as a layer. And then I send it to Marco and Marco reads it. And I'll usually send him a batch of pages. So he'll like get like four or five pages all at once that kind of complete an idea. And then he'll start working on it. Um, now, if we, if we really have an issue like with anything, I think one time we had an issue while we were talking over the phone and I couldn't see what Marco was doing. Marco couldn't understand what I was saying. So he's 20 minutes from me. I can literally go to his house and like sit over his shoulder and go, no, this and this and this and this. Uh, and yeah. the best part about, yeah, the best part about Marco is if I give Marco marching orders, which is what he calls it, uh, he sticks to his marching orders uh, for the most part. Sometimes he gets excited and gets ahead of himself, but I try yeah, to wrangle him in. Yeah, we're we're a good balance. Like he's the rational, uh, older, like more educated. <laughs> but he's got Mad Men in his middle name. How can he be the older rational? <laughs> that's that kind of a new that's name. the that's the contradiction, man. That, that or the irony. <laughs> The irony of Marco. <laughs> tell him. <laughs> yeah. Tell him. Yeah. yeah well, Mark, cool you guys are um, close enough that you can, you can actually do that, though. I mean, I can see when you're, you know, when yeah, we're together, we just, it makes things easier. Yeah. Yes. And we just, we just had a friend, we had a friend come over this last Wednesday and we had a little pizza night, drink and draw. And we were just inking a bunch of stuff, an idea that the three of us are working on. So it's, uh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool to get back into doing art again and doing different things. Oh, yeah. thank you, Tatiana, for the kind words. <laughs> yeah, she knows I've been drawing my butt. She knows I've been drawing my butt off the last uh, year. Um, just trying to get better, get more comfortable Absolutely. with my own, my art too. So, so you guys right. kind of have like your own break. version of the studio by uh, getting to hang out. Well, but only when you when you want to to work on projects. But that's got to be fun, you know, just being able to collaborate and just hang out and bounce ideas off one another. And and you never know that might lead to another project down the road, right? Yeah. Right. No, you're you're yeah. absolutely right. I mean, we have a lot of like there's a lot of ideas that we have, but <laughs> there's like only so much time in the day and, and in order of things that we have to do, you know. Yeah. Like like yeah. I said, I'm finally so happy that Hammer is going to be printed and out because boy, that's been that's been a nightmare the printing part for that. But um, yeah, going back to that, was yeah. that you're, you've been getting proof copies of it and they just haven't been up to snuff? Is it the paper? Is it the print? Is there a mix of yeah, both? Like, trying to find the right, uh, you know, the right to yeah, gloss, they, whatever. You just know, have to wait for the paper to make yeah. it print. Yeah. It, it, you can't see it here, but like Jason's pages, uh, Jason Gonzalez's pages, um, I don't think you can see it. They got kind of yellow and um, they didn't, some of the cutting wasn't right, but the, 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 the yeah, the trim. I don't know if you can see it, guys, but the colors, even the black isn't as, as black as it, as it could be. The, the cover came out great. Like, oh, yeah. The blacks of the great. cover. Sure. Yeah, the blacks of the cover came out great, but the the interior blacks they just um, let me dropped see. out. They just yeah, they dropped out a lot. So, and I know we have people waiting for this, so it's been it's just when it was out of our control. I just have to say, you know, guys, that'll come when it comes. You know, sorry, but. Right. right, well, you're doing a black and white book, so the thing is, you got to get it right. I mean, that's uh, and, it, and uh -huh. like, oh, yeah. this is like your love letter to this this uh, genre, this form, this art form, and uh, yeah. you can't you can't uh, cut corners. It's got to be it's got to be as perfect as you can make it. And printing is always where everything kind of falls 
falls apart, right? When you're sending those uh, digital files to the printer, you kind of have to sometimes guess and know that you need to darken them or something because you know how it's going to print. But uh, but still, there's always going to be so many you know so many factors that make it either lighter or too dark that uh, that are going to always be out of your control. So I can I can sympathize. I you know where you where you guys are at. I print a book every year. And there's always there's always one or two pieces that end up being in, in that book that don't look like we wanted them to, and right. uh, it's like you can, there's nothing you can do about it. But it's true, it's true. Uh, we did figure out the culprit, and we finally have it all dialed in. We even went since it's 52 pages, we decided that we didn't want to staple it, so we square bound it, you know, mm -hmm. perfect bound essentially. Um, and it's it's looking nice like just from the last proofs i got before we figured out the problem with the perfect bound part of it that stuff was beautiful so and the cover was beautiful and the back of it was beautiful and everything was black and wonderful um it's gonna be a really nice book and you're right we have to nail it and that's 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 the best jj man Thanks. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. He's so, like our number one fan. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Totally. He's here. So, uh, so once <laughs> this is done, what's the next projects you guys have or Anything that you're collaborating on, or is or do you guys have some side projects? Yeah. 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 Right now, I'm helping since Tatiana's uh, unicorn. Corn artist over there, Jay is so busy. I've been helping him a little bit, but it but it helps me too. So I've been uh, helping him do breakdowns, moving the camera around. So um, for a, a couple of books that he's working on, so that right. it gives him time to know if a shot works or not. And mm -hmm. I've been doing pretty good because he's been keeping ninety percent of, of my my establishing shots and stuff. So that's been pretty right. fun. Um, right. Yeah, we're working on uh, another. Do you want to talk about this way to the apocalypse now, or should we wait? Um, more more prominently, uh, beans. Jawbone. I'm doing Jawbone Death with yeah. Adam Lawson through mm -hmm. Substack. Uh, we should have a ash can that comes out in San Diego this year coming up so at the wesley snipes table so for exiled so uh we'll be doing that but another ip that we're creating uh is called this way to the apocalypse and i had come up with this idea of like four high school students just having to survive the apocalypse okay and it's done in a comedic way it's just meant to be a funny, funny book. And uh, I dive into several different genres during the process as far as like stories and where they're coming from. Uh, and I don't want to give away too much because the whole, the best part about it is figuring out like what the apocalypse is all about. Like there's a whole thing about it. So, um, that's actually being drawn by Dave Wagner uh, and I'll be inking it and Marco will be inking it. We're creating a bestiary currently that will kind of inform us to the creatures and things that are going to be inside the book. So mm -hmm. um, I imagine it's a year plus out before we have something to show and I want it to be completely done before we even decide to crowdfund it, something like that. But it's supposed to be fun, and it's supposed to be cool, and uh, that's about all I can say about that currently. All right. Yeah. So, so it, would, it will be a crowdfunded project for sure? Um, and it probably will be crowdfunded. Uh, my friend Adam, the Kill Journal gentleman, whenever I we work really close with each other, and whenever I come up with an idea, he always kind of wants it. So if I can get it far enough ahead, like he may just want it 
just based on the idea. But mm -hmm. I want to be able to hand them an issue when I say this is what I meant and see what happens. So uh, that's possible. Or if another company wants it, that's fine too. Or or we can just crowdfund it. The, the options are endless at this point. Mm -hmm. so, so is it going to be black and white? No, it's going to be yeah. color. You want to see, a, a, let's see if I can dig up one of the pieces. I had one. Yeah. Sitting, Give them a preview. Sitting, uh, I don't know where it is now. Part of the bestiary? Yes. My goodness. I'm going to step out of view for a second. OK. So have you been working on uh, some of the creatures as well, Marco? Yeah. Yeah, I get to draw some. We've uh, met. We've met three times, David, um, Jason, and myself, and it's it's cool. It's you know three buddies just drawing, laughing, you know, talking about crazy ideas, you know. So I found and it's, it, and it's 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 different too. Oh, cool, show us. Hey, Marco, uh, Tatiana asked uh, that you should show the piece you just inked over Jason. Oh, oh okay. Um, if, if you have I'll it, I'll have to step away. If you could just give me a second. Sure, yeah, sure. I have it. Give me one sec. Okay. So here, let me see if I can get it in there. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's like a wraith on one. Th this one over here is the wraith. And then this is what I call a gug. And they're like Harry and the Hendersons, <laughs> like a Bigfoot. <laughs> right. But their mouths like run down the front of their face. Uh, anyways, these are just some of the things that we're working on. It was inked by me, but drawn by David Wagner. Well, those are fun. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of. Uh, I like to pick up uh, artwork from like old TSR stuff when you can get it, and I always love character drawings like that, where you know they're just. Like you say, they're a bestiary. You know, my, one of my favorite Tolkien books is the Tolkien bestiary, right? A lot of Ian Miller in it. Oh, I mean, nice. that's a, that's a, so no, the, I love seeing illustrations like yeah. that just to help uh, define the look of a character. So those are beautiful. Thank you. Ready, Marco? Uh, yeah. Oh, Let me wow. see. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to. So this is an yeah, older piece. Same. So Jay and I have been. We've been uh, doing things together for a while. What was this, Jay? Eight, I think. Two thousand and eight. Yeah. Yeah. Two two thousand and eight. So, that's a little detail we put in there, especially in Maggie. But I enjoyed doing it. It was fun. Yeah. That's and you beautiful. just did it for fun. You just did it as an off thing. I thought I you got commission so. for a cover. You know? I can't. I'm a little. I don't, I can't remember. I don't think I got commissioned for a cover. I think everybody was doing like a vampy mag Magdalena thing when we were over at Joe's or something, and uh, uh, so I I decided to do one too. And it just so happens that, yeah, they never nobody ever knew about it, you know. Like other than the people who were sitting there, like Benitez had seen it, but it wasn't. Anyways, didn't it didn't become anything, yeah. and, and that's okay. I think I just did it for fun, anyways. And then you saw it, and you were like, "I can ink that." And I was like, "Yes, you can." <laughs> <laughs> well, it came out beautifully. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I'm gonna put the the link to the that the Indiegogo for Hammer one more uh, one more time into the chat. I'll make sure I put it in, into the description for the YouTube channel as well, so people can take a look at it after the show and uh check it out a little bit more but you know this is uh this is cool so what what's the next big project for both of you after you wrap up the printing on this i mean is there any as far as things that are going to be published that people would actually get to uh, be picking up in the stores or whatnot yeah. Ooh. uh nothing for a while We're yeah still kind of working some things. Well, things are percolating a... right now yeah you know how it is you cut that period of doing a lot of work and then things get published and then mm -hmm. 
And then while people I, are reading your stuff, you're back in your cave. <laughs> right, right. So in between Jawbone Death, that's coming out in San Diego, uh, I might, we haven't, we have yet to sign the contracts, but, and I'm kind of putting the cart before the horse, but EA Games is releasing Dead Space as a reworked uh, property, essentially. They reworked the physics engines and stuff, and they're re-releasing it in January of 2023. They reached out to Marvel Comics to see if they wanted to like, do something for them and, and kind of hype the video game, too. And I guess it didn't go well, so they looked at my buddy Adam Lawson and they said, hey, would you be interested in bidding? And so he did, and they bidded for the job, and I think tentatively doing the job, I have yet to start it, and it would be the biggest thing I'm working on, and it would be Dead Space. Dead Space. All right. Are we still there? Yes, you were here. You broke up a little so, bit, but we got that part at the end. So uh, I hate to okay, do this, good. but I've got yeah, to get it would to be the channel. Dead Space franchise. It would be a comic book for. It's a for which one? Okay, we're gonna. I have to a party. Uh, oh, that's right, and I have to get to another panel. So uh, uh, Marco, you've got your, your cat to attend to. I can see there. That's right. <laughs> Well, listen, guys, this has been a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, Marco, it was great seeing you again. Jason, was great Thank to you meet for you. having us. Love to have you guys on at any other time that uh, if you got something to promote or just stuff you'd like to hang out and talk. I mean, I'd, I'd love to. We do these shows every six months. So the next one's going to be, I think, the third right. weekend in November. So, uh, yeah, if there's cool. things going on there, I'd love we'll to be back. Right. On Perfect. All right, yeah, we'll let you know if Dead Space right. happened. Okay. Yeah. Talk to you then. All right.